Hi everybody. Hope you're all well. We're now live, I believe. So um, first of all, I just want to show you today, um, the grafting was finished yesterday. So behind me I have uh, my cell builder that was uh, used and you saw me making up the process and putting the grafts in. And uh, it has one last set put in yesterday. Let me give you some, um, a bit of um, story of it though, but it's been really cold here every day and we've got sunshine and it looks idyllic and beautiful, but actually just over that hedge, it's kind of blowing from the north and in this little microclimate, everything's fine. We've got loads of hawthorn in the background, which I'm sure you've all seen, loads of it all up and down this big hedge, but um, really it's cold and we'll only be flying for about three hours. So I've been really lucky to get as many cells through this as I have done. Um, the colony behind, I've moved a bit closer yesterday. I moved it further away because the bees were still finding the queen's pheromone and they were crawling along this pallet when I first set this up. So yesterday I moved it back a little bit and already some of them have gone back into the, um, into the other box. I had a look and it's full of bees already. Whether that's because some of the more the broods hatched out, it probably is as well. But then the whole idea today is we're gonna recombine this cell builder so we'll be putting that box back underneath here and this become, will become a queen right finisher on top above an excluder. And then if I wanted to in a few days time or whenever I'm ready to next, I can add some more brood to this, assess it, see how many nurse bees are in it and then it all starts again. But um, there is no unfortunately uh, assistant daughter here today. Molly is inside tied up with some lessons. So she's a bit busy and I'm just gonna be here for a few minutes just showing you the process. But the other reason why I wanted to ask you this is because, um, sorry, the other reason why I wanted to tell you this is because so many people say, what if I just make up a box with a few extra frames of brood, I take the queen away in a nuke and I leave frames in here. Is that okay just to do for one load of cells? Of course it is. Of course you can do that, okay? If you wanna to go to the Cell Builder Explained on my YouTube channel and I've got one called the Cell Builder Explain Questions and Answers, and it goes through that. You don't have to use this. The reason why I've done what I've done with this over five, six days is because um, I wanted to make a load of cells because all around here I've got lots of mini plus that need breaking down. And I need a lot of cells, okay? So it's given me the cells. I've got one last batch of graphs in here that I'm gonna go through in a minute on live. And then you'll see what we'll see what I don't know what we're gonna get, we'll see what we're gonna get, but I'm hopefully we'll have at least two or three bars of cells. They'll then be finished above here in this box still, but above that box behind above the queen. So first of all, we'll take this apart, we'll take this top off, take the roof, the feeder shell, and the top box off, and then look at everything, see how it's looking, and let's see what the graphs are like. So I'll just try and show you that. It's not easy with the tripod. I'm just gonna get it a little bit closer. Angle it down so you can see and hopefully and then um, we'll see where that takes us. Just bear with me, I'm going to straighten this up a little bit. Hopefully you can see that, okay? So as I said, this was just a feeder shell I had on top, on top of the roof. It's been really cold. I normally have a bit of insulation on it, so it's a standard super I used. All that now is now surplus and we end up with a surplus of equipment. So off comes the feeder. They've had a little bit of it, but it's been there if they need it. It was completely full, so they've taken it down by about a third. So there was some feed going in at night, and that's the good thing. So we'll put that to one side for now. As I said, put it on a place where the bees can get out. So this is a crown board, and it's a really thick one with lots of space. I like, like this so that I can put a feeder on, and then I can squash a few bees, I can put a feeder on, and then I can also put pollen stuff underneath this roof. And if you're careful and you put frames of coat in, and uh, so drawn foundation, they don't usually build into it if you're, if you're into it every other day. Okay, so let's see what we got in here. There'll be a lot of bees here. It's almost surplus bees, but I'm just gonna put these away for now onto the sides, just there, and if they want to crawl up, they can. And I'll move them away in a minute, but first I'm taking off this pollen sub, because this has gone a bit hard now, but they were still over it, as you can see. I'm gonna give a little bit of smoke, because I don't particularly want to, just want to move them out of the way. They're not 
stinging me as you can see, but there's an Asian Hornet. A few of them around now. Let's just make ourselves a bit of room. So I did one normal cell bar of 54, uh, sorry, of 14 times four. And also I did an extra bar there because I had some space that I stuck in. So I see what we got. I might end up in total with one extra load of cells. I might end up with very few. Who knows, the weather's been very cold. The bees are not at their most optimum now. They've, they've been in, doing cell building for five, six days now. So we'll see what we got. Just go through this. I'm gonna get this bar out first. That's the main cell bar there. I did actually put in more pollen frames as well, but I found it even better because I wanted to give it that last boost. So we'll see what these look like. Hopefully we've got some cells on here. Yes, we have. They've been started pretty well, considering that is a full house. There's one cell there that's getting low on raw jelly. So that's pretty good considering. I'll just show you this. So for a start, that's really good. And if you can see in there, but every single one looks queen right to me. Sorry, looks cell right. It's got a young larvae in it. So that's pretty awesome. So for an extra bar, that's pretty good. So let's see what the other one looks like. It's surprising, you, I was envisaging, I did extra because I thought the weather was gonna be that, because it's a little bit colder the last two days, and we've had hardly any bees flying for, they've flown in the garden, but they haven't flown in, in to, to forage properly. So they're all missing bringing in nectar, which unfortunately is a crying shame at the moment. So let's see what we got here. We're bound to have a few blanks on here. So as I did before, I'm gonna spin this around and I'm gonna take out the frames individually and then we'll look through them after. I tend to get them out and lie them on top and then it gives me a bit of time to sort them out, prepare them for where they're gonna go. And I've got finishes now that, I've already, that will have capped the first batch of cells. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple of these bars and put them in the other finishes that are now no longer finishing cells because those cells are capped. And that's what you can do once you start to have resources that even though I've got no more space, I'll leave two bars if I have them. And, and if I was lucky enough to have enough acceptance to have three or four bars, two of those bars I'd take to another colony just to spread the load. Because don't forget, these bees will be united with the queen above and excluded soon. So these bees will start again to feed the larvae that's in this box. So you've got to bear that in mind. So you don't want to leave too many cells in your finisher. It, it, they'll finish them fine, but I want to finish them with loads of raw jelly, with buckets of it. So let's see what we got. So you have to be a little bit careful and take your time. I'm not using gloves today because, well, that's the way it is. So that is finished with. those bees are off of there. So, reasonable acceptance on this bar. Let's take out the duds. I'll go through each one, gap them up, and then we'll see how many we got. I've done a load of cells, and to be honest, I'm probably not gonna need every single one of them, so I can be selective. Let's just get them through the process first and see where we go from there. So, second bar. Two there. I grafted these last night, by well, about six o'clock, 6.30, because it was getting, that one there's done as well. So all those are good as well. I say when it was getting cold, but I managed to just whip these in. I'm just gonna smoke these a little bit, just to get some of these bees off. That's why smoke is such a good tool, because it just helps move bees. You're not, they're not stinging me, we're just moving them out the way without damaging the other queen cells that I've just done. So easy to damage them. That one back on its side and that one. And there's another dud I've missed. Okay. So in this one we have 
That's good, that's good. One dud there. One there. And one there. So I'm actually very happy though because I'm going to have more cells than I know what to do with. But it's much better to have that and make up loads of nukes and splits this time of year knowing that those bees you make now are probably going to make you honey in the summer. So if you get your act together and do it right. So there we go. They're all swimming in royal jelly. There's a lot of cells here that have been accepted. Wow. And that is a full house as well. I'm not really shaking these hard, I'm just getting some of these bees off. You just give it a gentle movement. That one is a full house, every single one has got a queen in. So we've only lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven out of 14 times five. So now this is where it gets tricky. So Let's gap these up. That one I can't gap up because it's full. This one only needs one cell. So let's start from the back. That one there needs one. So it looks like we'll have four bars complete again. So that's um, a lot of cells. Can, can, I've got about another 160 as well coming out, so I've got an awful lot of work to do to make use of these cells. So what I did has worked really well, and for a first graft of the year, considering it was cold, it's gone exceptionally well, so I'm really pleased. So... Um, we need to lift off four of these, and we're still going to have two spare. does help I know if you've got nice bees and yes these are really not being nice despite the weather being cold and if you've tried to make cell builder with really runny bees it's a bit of a nightmare to be honest but you know it is what it is kind of thing you, you you kind of reap what you sow I spent a long time trying to get some decent bees and believe you and me when I first started cell building the bees I was using were atrocious but we got there we learned a lot so right what I can do is I can put those, um, I'm going to, I think I'll put three bars back in and I'll put the other two, well I can put, actually I'm going to just put two bars back in in the cell frame. If, when I do that, that's when you've got to watch it, that's when they'll build comb. But if you put in foundation around that, you should avoid it because the, so our flow is actually not on, as you know, because of the weather. So these two are going back in here. And what I'm going to do is put two and, a, and those few back in, in the middle of the bottom, where those other three gone there. They can just go in like that or at the top. But they, because now I'm reducing the amount of cells I'm asking the bees to finish in a really strong colony, then that's absolutely fine. Because I've only got, uh, well there's 28, but it's a massive colony. 29, 30, 31, but it's a massive colony still. So I have reduced that number down. But those two bars, will go on another colony afterwards. So I'm going to pop this back in its place. So there's less bees there now. So, and I'm just going to push these up again, the way I do. So that's good, okay. Now what I'm going to do now is, I'm actually going to lead these across the middle, like so and they will be kept warm. So I'm going to put this cover back on briefly and carefully without squashing any bees, I hope, so that those cells will be kept warm for a few minutes. And when I've finished, I'll go and take them to another finisher. Okay, so just pop that back on for now. But this is where it gets a bit tricky. I'm only doing this because it's really cold because I'm trying to keep my bees warm. So you have to work with the weather. We still have smoke, only just. So this was on top of this box. So this box has to be moved around here. So temporarily, 
I'm going to take this box off its base. I'm just going to bring this back a little bit so you can hopefully see. Okay, there we go. A bit of smoke just to calm the bees down a little bit. So, this base I didn't screw on, okay? This is where sometimes wearing gloves is, is a good option because this box is darn heavy. I'm going to have to crack this box up. But I've, got a, I've got my shaker box alongside that I'm going to put this on, okay? So I've just shake, taken it off its base. I should have handles on this, so it's my own fault. But this just comes to one side for a moment. Okay, there we go. That now is away from the scenario. Let's move these cells out of the way. Cell cups. And I can move this base away for a moment as well, just so I can slide the other one around. All those bees will find their way back in the front afterwards. Let's give this a little smoke just to clear these off. Get them on the ground, they can walk back in after. Tidy this up. You have to be well organized because when there's bees flying everywhere. So don't forget, this is the queen right section. This is now re-inverted. We've now moved it back 180 degrees to the same place it was in before. So there's the queen in here with a lot of bees that have hatched out since I put it this way. Remember, when I made this the queen right section, I moved it away, I took a lot of the nurse bees out and shook them into this box. But they will reunite perfectly. There'll be a few bees flying around here for a little while, but they'll soon pick up where the queen is. Most important thing, you must have a queen excluder, because otherwise this queen will be up there ripping those cells down, and before you know it, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, you've got no cells left. But because we move, we're moving two loads to the builder, there you are, to the finisher I should say, we'll be fine. But, so that will go here, the bees can crawl up into there, that's the old base. Now we're just going to move these onto the top here, I'm just going to find some smoke. Handle free so I'm not picking up a whole clump of bees. So I can tell you, you would really be better off having handles on this hive. But now the colony is reunited. Let's make sure that that queen, is, queen excluder is properly fitted. Don't want any gaps. So now what have we done? This is the queen right section where it was originally. And there's the queen excluder. And this is still, this still has no access to the queen and this will be used as good as, as a honey super now. Because there's no reason why they won't fill that with honey. And that's what they tend to do all the time. But, um, we know that there's not much of a flow on and I've got extra comb in here. Okay, so the bees will come in the bottom and go up the top and use it as a super. I could put a super on top tonight as well to help to give them somewhere to put excess honey. And I think I will do that. Because I've done that on another colony I had that's a breeder queen and it didn't look like it's a double brood as well, just like this. And I put a super on and within two days they'd filled it up with what was too much in the, in the main brood box. So, I've also got to make a note of the times because I grafted yesterday. So yesterday was the 29th, I think, or 28th. 28th, so that'll be ready. So 10 days after, these cells will be ready on day 10, and that will be the 10th of May. But the first ones are out on the 4th of May. So I've got a continuous progression of cells coming out all the time that I can use. But that is all I really wanted to show you, just to prove the point that, isn't that lovely? To prove the point that you um, that you can use this as it is if you want for a very short period of time and then reinvert it the day after and then you have 
instantly just used it as a starter and a finisher. Or you can do it on a small scale and have a box you put into five frames and take the queen away on the other five frames and then you put her in a five over five after as a queen right finisher. This is now a queen right finisher. Very simple, very, very simple process to learn. It's just about being aware of what you can and cannot do. I've been doing it now for six years. Um, I think it's six years since I've been doing cell building. And uh, I kind of learn different things every year. It's, it's absolutely fantastic, you know, because... And also when I do it in a different location, something else happens. So it's quite odd, really. But like, for instance, the bees walking along the pallet to, um, to where the queen was in the other hive. But uh, that's just differences, different places. I'm going to take this off in a moment when I've got the other hives open and I'm going to insert some more uh, the other two uh, lines of cells in. It's going to come away out the hubbub of those bees so I can see the screen. Um, hope you all enjoyed that. It was just a bit of extra thing to show you what you can do. But that now, so that is, that is ready to be restocked when I want. I can also add brood to it now if I wanted to boost it up again for... Um, to use again in about another week. So if I wanted to add brood around my finish, my finishing cells, it would be no problem. But it needs a super on top. It needs me to take away those top two frames. But other than that, everything's fine. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Catch you again soon. Bye for now.